Hi everyone, Teruli Tutoring here. In today's video, we are going to be starting the first video in my new series of videos for Ontario students taking the course Grade 12 Advanced Functions. This video mostly serves as a review of Grade 11 Functions, which is the prerequisite course for Ontario students that they need to take before they take Advanced Functions. I mentioned this a lot throughout the video, saying, oh, you should be familiar with this concept from Grade 11 Functions. If you're not, that's okay. If you're not an Ontario student and you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's also okay. We're going to go through the concepts in this video. I just thought I would put a little disclaimer there, so in case you're watching and you're like, oh, but I didn't learn that. That's totally okay. I'm not trying to single you out. I'm just saying that many of you may be familiar with this concept because you learned it in prior years. Okay, now let's get into the review. Okay, so the first thing we're going to review is what a function is. So a function is a relation in which there is only one output value for every input value. Another way of saying this is that an x value can only have one corresponding y value. You can see me underlining this on the screen just to emphasize the point. There should only be one output value. Now there are three ways to determine whether a relation is a function. Let's go through them together. The first way to determine if a relation is a function is by using the vertical line test. The vertical line test basically states that if a vertical line crosses a graph at more than one point, it is not a function. So you can see me here drawing some vertical lines on the graphs below. You can see on the first graph on the left it is a parabola and that all the vertical lines only cross the graph at one point, meaning it is a function. However, on the second graph, the vertical lines cross at two points, meaning that it is not a function. The second method that can be used to determine whether or not a relation is a function is a table of values. You can see here I have two tables of values below. I'm just going down the x column and making sure that each of the x values is unique. By doing this, I am ensuring that there is only one x value for each corresponding y value and i'm doing the same thing for the next table on the right however when i'm scanning my x values i can see that the x value 7 appears two times informing me that the table on the right is not representative of a function whereas the table on the left is representative of a function so the third and final method of determining whether or not a relation is a function is to use the equation of the relation if y has an even exponent, then the relation is not a function. If we look below on the left, we can see that the in the equation, y does not have an even exponent, therefore making it representative of a function. However, on the right, if we were to expand the brackets, we would see that y does have an even exponent of 2, therefore making this equation not representative of a function. So now that we've gone through what a function is and how we can use different methods to determine if a relation is a function, let's go through how we write the domain and range of a function. If you have taken grade 11 functions, you should be familiar with the concept of writing domain and range, as this is something you will have already learned. However, let's just refresh your memories and go through it anyway. Domain basically represents the values that x can take in a given function, and the range represents the values that y can take in a given function. If there are any restrictions or asymptotes to the x or y values in a function, we must notate that when we write our domain and range. We'll go through how we do this with a few examples. Okay, so for our first example, let's determine the domain and range for the function y equals 3x plus 4. At this point, we should be able to recognize that this equation represents a linear relation. When we think of the graph of a linear relation, we know that there are no restrictions on the x or y variables. There are no asymptotes, there are no jumps, holes, or breaks. Therefore, when we're writing our domain and our range, we should make sure that we notate that there are no restrictions on our x and y variables. So we would do that as follows. So when I write my domain and range, I notate it by saying d for domain and r for range. However, some teachers may require you to write a whole word. It doesn't matter, ask them what they prefer. This is how I'm gonna be doing it. So you can see on the screen above, I have written squiggly bracket, X, E, R, close squiggly bracket, 
which basically means x belongs to all real numbers. And then below, I have written range as squiggly brackets y e r, which means y belongs to all real numbers, as there are no restrictions on the x and y values in a linear relation. Okay, so the next example we're going to be doing is for the equation of the function y equals 3 to the power of x. We should know from grade 11 that this represents an exponential function. If you don't, I'm going to be posting a video soon. It's not up yet, but soon about exponentials, and it'll be in my grade 11 functions playlist, so you can check that out when it's up if you need a refresher. But basically, on a graph of exponential functions, which I'm drawing to the side here on the screen, you can see that there is an asymptote at y equals 0. This asymptote means that there will be no values at or below y equals 0, so we have to take that into consideration when we are writing our domain. This occurs because you can never get a negative y value for any number raised to the power of x. We will learn, you learn that in grade 11. Again, it will be reviewed in the video I make. However, in terms of the x values in the domain of this function, we can see that there are no discontinuities on the graph for our x values. So when we write our domain, we will say domain equals squiggly bracket x e r, which means x belongs to all real numbers. However, when we go to write our range for this function, we must take into consideration that there is an asymptote. So we're going to start off by saying range equals squiggly brackets y belongs to all real numbers, so y e r, but we're going to put this little line after, which means such that y, and we're going to write y, must be greater than 0. That way, we are including the fact that there is an asymptote in our explanation of what the range is for this function, thus explaining that, yes, y can be all real numbers, however, there is an asymptote, so y must be above 0. For our next example, we are going to be dealing with the function y equals x squared plus 1. This is a parabola, and we are going to just sketch a little picture of it on the side here to kind of help us visualize what the graph looks like. It's not to scale or anything. But it's just a good idea, in my opinion, to when you're writing the domain and range, if you can just kind of sketch a little graph of what it, the function you're dealing with may look like, so you can kind of visualize what the x values are, what the y values are, if there are any restrictions on your domain and range. If you're a visual learner like me, that'll really help you. So we can see here on this graph that our x values, there are no restrictions to them. However, since the graph is opening up and starting at the y value of 1, None of the y values can fall below that value of that y intercept value of 1. So that's definitely a restriction of, on our range that we should take into consideration because there could be no y, y values below y equals 1. So when we're writing our range, we have to think about that. So let's start off by writing our domain. We know that there are no restrictions on our x values. So we can say domain or d as I notate it equals squiggly bracket x e r, meaning x belongs to all real numbers. The E means belongs to, and then R means all real numbers, um, and then close squiggly bracket. And then for our range, we're going to write R equals squiggly bracket Y E R, Y belongs to all real numbers. And then we're going to put that line, which means such that, so Y belongs to all real numbers such that Y is greater than or equal to one, which is the Y intercept value. Notice here that I say that y is greater than or equal to um, 1 because the y, the value of y, the y-intercept value, can actually be 1, whereas on the exponential function we dealt with before, there was an asymptote that meant that y could never reach 0. So that's why I wrote y is greater than 0, not y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so in our next example, we will be dealing with the function y equals 1 over x minus 2. Using our knowledge from grade 11, we should be able to recognize that this is an example of a rational function. We know that in rational functions, there are asymptotes at the values that make the denominator equal to 0. We have a vertical asymptote at that value. We also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, so we should take that into consideration. So, in order to determine where our vertical asymptote is going to be, we need to find out what value is going to make our denominator 0. What I like to do is take whatever values I have on my denominator 
and set the whole thing equal to zero. So you can see that I'm going to be writing x minus 2 equals 0. And I'm going to manipulate this very simple equation by moving negative 2 over to the other side of the equation, and I get x equals 2. So I know that when x equals 2, this denominator will equal 0. And it's important to determine this because we cannot divide by 0. It's like one of the big sins of math. Do not commit that crime. You cannot divide by 0. Like rule number one, you can't do it. So that's why we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2 on this particular graph. So we need to take that into consideration when writing our domain. So in this case, our domain would be x, e, r, x belongs to all real numbers, such that, put that line again, x cannot, or x with like an equal sign, with a little line running through it, um, equal 2. So the symbol to say cannot equal is an equal sign with a line through it. And then we say x cannot equal 2, and we close our little squiggly bracket. And we have written our domain for this function. Now, for our range of this function, we're going to say r for range, squiggly bracket, y, e, r. y belongs to all real numbers. I almost said ry there for a second. Don't say that. Um, such that y cannot equal 0. So I put the equal sign with the line through it, and I put 0, and I close my squiggly brackets, and I have written my range for this function. Okay, so for our next example, we're going to be dealing with writing the domain and range for the equation y equals square root of x minus 5. You might recognize this from grade 11 as a square root function. When we are writing the domain of a square root function, we need to take into consideration the values that make the part of the equation that is inside the actual root. So in this case, the x minus 5 equal to 0 because we cannot have any values in our domain that are below zero because that would make our square root negative. And for the purpose of this course, you might learn otherwise if you go on to pursue university math, we are not taking any roots of negative numbers, okay? All right, just laying down some ground rules. You might learn it differently somewhere else, but for this, we're not. So to determine what value will make the inside of our root zero, I'm gonna say x minus five equals zero. Similarly to what I did for our rational function, move my negative five over, get x equals 5. So uh, that is the value that we're going to be keeping in mind for when we write our domain. I'm also below here going to draw a little picture or a little graph of what this would look like, just so we can visualize what our graph would look like, maybe help us a bit when we're writing our domain and range. We can see that our x values start at 5 and then our y values start at 0, and they go up from there. So we're going to keep that in mind when we write our domain and range. So our domain, we're going to say that the domain is equal to squiggly bracket x e r meaning x belongs to all real numbers we're going to put our line that means such that and then we're going to say x is greater than or equal to five because that's where our x values start and they go up from there then for our range we're going to say range equals y e r sorry squiggly bracket y e r meaning that our range can be our, our, our y values belong to all real numbers then we're going to put our line that means such that, and then we're going to say y is greater than or equal to zero. This tells us that our y values can be anything. However, they start at zero and they go up from there. Then we're going to put our little squiggly close bracket, and we are going to call it a day. We have written the domain and range for this function. Okay, so this is going to be our last example. I know this video is longer than normal, but I want to make sure that I really reviewed everything from grade 11 functions before we jump into advanced functions for grade 12 students. So basically we're going to be writing the domain and range for the function y equals 1 over x squared plus 4. And if we are going to de determine the domain normally, we would take the denominator and set it equal to 0. So let's do that and see what happens. So we're going to say x squared plus 4 equals 0. And then we're going to bring 4 over and we're going to say x squared equals minus 4. However, once we get to this point, we're like, wait, a square of a number can't equal a negative number. So we can't say that x squared equals negative 4. That's not possible. So basically, when we get this, we realize that there is going to be no vertical asymptote in this function. So I wrote no VA, VA vertical asymptote, just in case you're not sure what my notation means. Um, later on in the course, we will see more of what the graph of this function looks like. 
I'm going to draw it at the bottom later so you can kind of get a visualization. But if we're going to write the domain, we're going to say domain equals squiggly bracket x e r x belongs to all real numbers because there were no restrictions on the domain. However, in terms of the range, we're going to say range equals squiggly bracket y e r y belongs to all real numbers. Put our line su such that y is greater than zero because there is still that vertical sort of horizontal asymptote for our y values. And you can see on the side, I am drawing a little graph. The graph of this function kind of looks a bit like a hat to me. I don't know. You'll see it later on in the course. We do deal with this, I think, in chapter five when we get to rational and reciprocal functions and what they look like. But for right now, all you need to know is how you would write the domain and range for that, this function, which is as follows above. Okay, so that concludes today's introduction to advanced functions. If you have any questions about what we've reviewed in this video, feel free to comment stuff down below. I'll try to get back to you. Um, the next video for um, advanced functions, my advanced function series I'll be doing, should be up soon. And in that video, we will not be reviewing. We'll be kind of diving into like the meat and potatoes of the course, talking about things like absolute value and what that means. So stay tuned for that. See you guys later.